advanced master, I think what the main thing that we would like to um, achieve for the student is instead of teaching them basically lots of bits and pieces, we would like to give them a, a good toolbox that they can build on in their future career. So it's like a bit, there is this ancient uh, Chinese saying, it's better to teach a man, it's better to teach a man how to fish than give him ten, uh, ten fish. So that's, that's kind of the, uh, the attitude that we, we're taking in this program. When I look at the, the market of um, bond finance education, you kind of can distinguish in two, uh, two areas. There is one group which is very much focused on the mathematical rigorous derivations of models for pricing derivatives. So let's say sell side oriented. And then there is a, that, that tend to be programs which are much more buy side oriented where they, they move more into empirical skills, uh, but they're very low on derivatives knowledge. Well, in this program, obviously we try to combine the two, but you, uh, there's, something has to go, obviously, if you try to do that. So what we have tried to diminish is the absolute mathematical rigor. So we bring them up to a, a mathematical standard, which I think is enough. Um, and then in, in return, we actually put in a lot more emphasis on empirical skills and programming skills. So this is where we, what kind of distinguishes us from the others. And looking at the ratio of how the time is spent, uh, the time I spend in my job, I think the ratio in, in our program is much more aligned with the ratio that a quantitative practitioner spends his time. The ties with the financial industry are actually quite good uh, if we, we look at the local players. So it is this shows itself in several aspects. So we have guest lectures uh, from people from the, the local um, industry. We can use their data for educational purposes. We have an internship program. So at the end of our program, there is a three month internship and they do that, some of them at least do that in the, uh, the local industry. Others also go out to, uh, for instance, last year we had a guy who went and took up a position at a hedge fund in Los Angeles. So it is possible there is, um, we offer uh, internship possibilities within the, the local industry. Actually, this year, I think some of them are quite disappointed that uh, most of the students found their internship so easily that it's actually the, we have to disappoint the, uh, uh, the, the banks and financial players here rather than the students. Uh, uh. So we are also trying to extend our financial ties outside of Belgium. So we've gradually built up uh, connections with places in London and uh, other surrounding countries as well. The uh, master has actually been kind of the, the content has been driven for market demand. So, uh, myself being a sell side quant for many years, I've spoken to colleagues in the industry. Um, I also have many friends on the buy side. So, I had a, a lot of discussions with them and kind of we agreed that many of the skills that are required in either of these. Uh, these areas are actually quite similar. So because of this overlap, we condense this into the, the core competencies. And then when I speak to my sell side friends, I, I notice and I, I've noticed myself as well, is that there's a bit of a lack of empirical skills on the, the sell side. So kind of buy side skills is what sell side people miss. And on the buy side, people feel that they don't have enough derivatives knowledge so the bias that kind of need, misses sell sites, typical sell side skills. So that's why I think having a generalist program is actually beneficial to both of these uh, these streams. So as I said, from from a market demand, we kind of created the program in line with the uh, with their expectations. A typical example, for instance, if we look on the sell side, if you are a risk manager, um, you need to know about derivatives valuation. But in order to come up with appropriate risks for the, for the bank in the future, you also have to general, uh, generate realistic scenarios for the bank's portfolio in the future. But that actually requires good knowledge of empirical properties. So in order to analyze such a problem, you have to have empirical skills to generate realistic scenarios. But you also have to have derivatives valuation skills to actually value the portfolios at future points in time. 
Maybe also give an example on the other side, so on the buy side, um, it's not just that you build a portfolio of, of basic assets of which you know the empirical properties, but many of these buy side firms, they also use derivatives. So they would need to have derivatives knowledge as well to build portfolios involving derivatives. Um, actually, even what you also see nowadays is that um, in order to predict asset returns, more and more asset managers are actually using information from the uh, options markets. So in order to uh, appropriately use this information, they need to have at least a basic understanding of how derivatives work to use this information in an appropriate manner to predict asset prices in the, in the future. Well, essentially, I, what I tried to do is uh, build a program such that they had the skills that I was looking for when recruiting students in the past. So typical examples is that the, what I noticed is that many people who come to interviews, they, they tend to, their empirical skills, if they have it, tend to be very equity focused and also in derivatives valuation. So academic programs tend to mainly start from equity and work from there. Well, if you see the financial industry, Areas like, fi like fixed income and credit, they are much bigger than the equity, equity market. So instead of just offering the ac typical academic fixed income and credit courses, we actually introduced fixed income and credit courses, which are very much aligned with what is customary in the, uh, the financial industry. When I think about skills, what I noticed is that um, it's kind of the lack of programming skills that students have uh, when they, they actually come for, for interviews. So most of them, they're quite quantitative, so they have some, some programming skills, but it tends to be in rather academic-like um, programming languages. So MATLAB is a, is a typical example, which is very good for academic work and prototyping, but it's not a language or a, a skill that you can use if you need to build large-scale programs that get get used at a, at a large financial institution like a bank or an asset manager. So the, basically the de facto standard language that we use in the industry, especially on the sell side, is C++. So some students do have these skills, but it's typically just C++, syntax. So what we try to do in this uh, program is that besides learning them the syntax of C++, is we also teach them how to structure programs so that they can start with small pieces of code but actually build into a large scale library. Now, in an academic program, it, we can obviously not build them. a bank-like uh, library, but a small library that they can build upon in their future, their future career. The thing that we try to do in the, uh, the programming course is we try to blend it in with um, financial courses so that they actually reinforce the knowledge that they gained in the uh, topic courses. So an example could be in the programming course you get an assignment which is aligned with portfolio construction or an assignment which is aligned with uh, fixed income derivative valuation. So that it's, uh, it's not a specific course and program. You actually uh, you have this interaction with the, uh, with the other courses to reinforce the knowledge. In terms of profiles, well, in principle, anybody who has a quantitative background is welcome, but if looking at the students, we see them coming from, let's say, two streams. Uh, one stream is quantitative students with an economics background who really want to reinforce their, really build up their quantitative skills, and the program is well suited for that. And there's also people who have, let's say, a lot of engineering skills, but they have no finance background. Uh, so you have civil engineers, mathematics students, and they also come to us and they, they really build up their applied knowledge uh, of these, these quantitative techniques in a, in a financial environment. So when we look at the, the jobs that are available to our candidates, our, our students, uh, it's quite diverse. So there is the, the typical division between uh, the buy side and the sell side. So when we talk about sell side, we mean banks, intermediaries, 
institutions that offer products. And when we talk about the buyer side, we talk about uh, asset managers, pension funds, so people who basically initiate business. So on the sell side, the typical job is a derivatives analyst, so they tend to be more focused on derivatives. You can build models to um, evaluate derivatives, that's the, the front office role. But there's also the risk manager who analyzes the risks in these, to, these derivatives. On the buy side, typical roles are to uh, construct the uh, portfolios of uh, what well, could be equity, could be equity and fixed income products, depending on the underlying, uh, the underlying fund they, they work in. But besides these, these kind of classical streams, recently f financial technology has um, uh, grown substantially. So people are also very well suited to join uh, financial fintech startups. Um, some of our students have actually been offered PhD positions and some of them have actually taken them up. So it's, it's by no means only an industry, it is focused on industry, but there are also students who have used it to grow in their academic careers. Thank you.